Hey everybody, it's Brian with Engadget. Uh, we are here in the wonderland that is the AOL.com stairwell to show you the new Nook Glow Light. Very similar moniker to the last generation. Uh, Barnes & Noble's actually ditched the, the simple touch name, however, it's because we've got a new hardware design. Uh, there are some, some distinctions to the aesthetics on this guy. Some are good, some are bad. Uh, one of them is really good, however, this thing is incredibly light. It's 6.2 ounces. It's a fair bit lighter than the last generation. It's actually lighter than the new lighter Kindle Paperwhite as well. First aesthetic change you're gonna notice on this device, it's actually got a new white paint job. Uh, that's versus the dark gray the last couple generations. Barnes & Noble tells us this is because you're gonna get less of a contrast when you're reading it. So the difference between the text and the body is less pronounced than say the, the black Kindle Paperwhite or the black Kobo. Honestly, we can't say we, uh, we actually notice a heck of a lot of difference between the two. Uh, otherwise, it's, it's pretty, pretty similar physically. Uh, same height, same width, same rounded corners as the last generations. It's actually a few fractions of an inch thinner than the last generation. You're, you're not gonna notice a huge change there. You will, however, probably notice that the physical page turn buttons are gone from the front bezel. Uh, another big change to this guy. So if you take a look at the back, the big power button is gone right here. It's been moved to the side. It's a small slit right there. Um, kind of nice, you know, you're less likely to accidentally turn it on or off by accident. Uh, the back is also a lot flatter than it has been in past generations. That's because the little concave backing is gone. So it's not quite as easy to hold. It doesn't quite fit as well to the contours of your hand. Of course, the end button is still present on the front bezel. Uh, this is the home button as it is with all other Nook devices. It also holds a, a nice little secret. You can hold it down for two seconds. And there we go, there's the, uh, there's the glow light that gives this Nook its name. So uh, Barnes & Noble is actually the first major e-reader manufacturer to come out with the device about a year and a half ago with the front lighting technology. We really liked it when it first came out, but subsequently uh, Kindle released the Paperwhite, Kobo released the Glow, both readers with much better front lighting. Um, kind of pointed out how, how, how blue the first Glow light was, how uneven it was. It was very spotty lighting up and down the front. Things are much, much improved here. Um, still not quite perfect. I'd say still not quite on par with the new Paperwhite, still not quite on par with the uh, lighting on the Glow or the Kobo Aura. All in all, Barnes & Noble's done a pretty good job improving the front lighting on this device this time out. Uh, as far as the actual touchscreen technology, however, we're dealing with some, some last generation hardware here. It still uses infrared touch. Everybody else has moved on to capacitive. That means that uh, it's not gonna be quite as responsive as it is on other readers, but it should do the job for the most part. Things are a lot simpler this time out with the software. Uh, there's a little bit more white space. There's just not as much going on on this homepage right here, which you know we, we, we do appreciate with e-readers. I think things should be pretty much as simple as possible. Fire up the shop, but things are also simplified here as well. You've got this little carousel uh, in the middle. You've got some categories up top, but again, otherwise, not too much happening on that front. I'm gonna click right here. This will actually take us into the text of the book that we're currently reading. Um, again, keeping things very simple. You're gonna get the, the title of the book up there when you first start, it's gonna go away as soon as you flip through. At the bottom of the page, you're gonna see your progress, so what page you're on, out of how many pages you have left to go. We're gonna tap this to bring up some options. So this is actually the only place where you're gonna be able to adjust the text. Unfortunately, unlike the competition, you can't actually pinch to zoom, you've gotta go in here. Uh, so we've got seven font sizes, we've got six font types and, and, and various different options for line spacing and margins. Um, not nearly as many as you're gonna get on the Kobo, but these should pretty much do the trick for most people. Um, you know, as per usual, I'm gonna hold down a word to highlight it. You actually now get the word up top there very briefly. It'll show you what you're highlighting. You can drag this to highlight a bit of text. Um, from here, you can look it up in the Merriam-Webster's Dictionary, you can add notes, you can add highlights, and you can share it through uh, Facebook, Twitter, and through email. One more nice thing worth pointing out in the reading experience, I'm gonna flip through a few pages. If you're an e-reader enthusiast, you've no doubt noticed that there's no full page refresh. So Barnes & Noble's actually worked with e-ink, much like Kobo has, to get rid of that. Um, it's nice, you, you don't get a full flash or anything like that while you're doing the reading. You will, on, however, uh, get one of those every time you make a major change, like moving from the text to, uh, to the menu and things like that. So all in all, Barnes & Noble hasn't done a ton to really improve the software experience, but it's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, 
they've done it pretty well in the past. It's going to do pretty much everything you need to do. Uh, we, we would like to see a few bells and whistles additions here, however. Uh, Kobo, for example, has a partnership with Pocket, so you can actually read all that information on the go. Uh, Amazon has their nice x-ray feature, which helps you look up characters and things like that in the text. And there's going to be some good reads integration in the future. So if Barnes Noble really wants to continue to set itself apart from everybody else, they're going to they're have to add something on the software front. The new Niccolo light. The new Kindle Paperwhite, uh, both of these are 119 as per usual. However, that price with Barnes & Noble doesn't include ads, unlike the Kindle Paperwhite, which has uh, sp special offers. Um, all in all, it's not a bad reader. It's certainly the best Nook e-reader uh, available yet. Was it worth a year and a half wait? Probably not. Uh, lots of features here aren't quite on par with the Kindle Paperwhite. It's got an 800 megahertz processor versus the one gigahertz on the Kindle. Uh, the front lighting isn't quite as good, but you know, if you've been waiting for a new Nook, if you're into that ecosystem, this is probably uh, about as good as you're gonna get.